So if you have been watching my channel in the last few weeks, you've seen me setting up this motorcycle. Um, it's a BMW uh, G650X Challenge. Um, it's a great bike, but it's uh, more of a woods bike. And I've been setting it up to go uh, moto camping, um, doing a more minimalist setup, uh, which has been a bit of a struggle because I like carrying a lot of gear on my um, camping trips. But the motorcycle just has a lot of limitations as far as range. It has almost no limitations once you get in the woods. It's an awesome motorcycle. But I've been wanting to do a little bit more um, longer rides, um, a little bit more pavement. So I started looking for a road bike, and I found this bike. Now, this bike is an awesome road bike, but it is terrible off-road, as I will find out this weekend. And, uh, but it, for the short term, it's a great road bike. I want to eat up some miles and do some longer trips. And that is why I bought this bike. But the good news is there was no need to do minimalist camping on this bike because I could fill these two cavernous side cases, then build a platform to mount a waterproof case for my electronics to charge them while I'm rolling down the road and then all I had left to do was to mount the rest of my camping gear on the pillion seat and after all the construction was done I had a fantastic two-wheeled SUV to carry me up into the mountains of North Carolina so that was the plan to pack all my camping gear and a fishing rod and head up into the mountains to catch some trout like I did in my youth and camp on a creek in North Carolina. My route was loosely planned, but once you get up into the North Georgia mountains, all the roads are fantastic. So that's what I decided to do is just wander my way up into the Robbinsville area to find a camp for the night. Once you cross the border into North Carolina, the mountain size tends to double, or at least it seems like mountain peaks are twice the size they are in any other part of the country. They are monsters, and it's a fantastic area to ride. But I wandered around uh, for several hours in the dark before I found my camp. I'm not even in a bag tonight. I'm probably not going to get in a bag because it's still, oh, golly, it's got to be close to 75. So um, anyway, I had to throw up the tarp real quick, and even that, I mean, that was less than five minutes. So with the, the equivalent time of maybe setting up a tent. I can throw a tarp over this thing really quickly. So lesson learned, I think uh, the rest of the, the time I'm out here, I'm going to have a tarp hung over my my hammock <laughs> just in case. Um, because you never know out here. It's there's we it's weird weather out here. It's, uh, you know, it could drop down in the 50s and I, who the hell knows. So I've got my boots on and uh, I'm still chilled. Man, I you know, I thought about a sweater, and I thought I need to pack a sweater, and then I just didn't. I, that's the last time I thought about it. Um, I'll know next time. Always pack a sweater when you're hammock camping, even in the summer. Especially when you go into the mountains. It's really not that cold. It's 65, 67 degrees. Um, which is perfect weather for hammock camping. Except the fact that it's that convection, it su it sucks the the uh, the warmth out of your body, um, just kind of like uh, kind of like uh, laying on a cold floor. Laying on a cold floor in the summer is great as long as it's boiling hot outside. You you it cools your body. But if it's you know if you're sitting on a cold floor in air conditioning. <laughs> It's a it's a completely different animal. Uh, thinking right now, roll up to the dragon, have some breakfast up there at the uh, at the restaurant, and then maybe run take a run or two down the dragon before the the Friday parades roll in this afternoon, and then um, make my way maybe back up uh, 28, and maybe find me a creek to camp on tonight. That's the ultimate thing is. Uh, creek camping, fishing, but of course riding these fantastic roads is, is one of the big things this weekend too. Um, one of the big surprises, another big surprise is this pillow I forgot that I bought t 
two or three weeks ago. I had a similar pillow that I really liked, except it started leaking air um, shortly after I got it. This one um, held onto the air really good, but I like this little dimple in the middle. For some reason, it just kind of sticks in your head. You slip your ear in there. Um, I like pillows, what can I say, um, but this thing, this thing in combination with this little hardcore fluffy guy that stays inflated. Um, anyway, that's my plan. I'm still just blown away at how magical this campsite was. Finding this thing last night, I, I had turned into at least three turnoffs before this last night. Um, Cause you know, all I need is a place to, to, to be able to get the bike in and out of. Number one, number two, <laughs> a place to string a hammock, you know. So um, the really great thing about hammocks is you don't need a flat spot. You don't need you know, uh, a, a, a flat, grassy, sandy area. You don't need that with hammock. You can, and I have, I have camped on uh, hillsides like this up here where you would never, you would never throw a, a, a tent because you'd slide, and I have. I've, I've camped on slight inclines and tents and slid to the bottom or the side of the tent um, which is <laughs> which is interesting, but uh, you don't have to have that. You don't have to clear up sticks. You don't have to you don't have to pick up anything um, or move anything because you're hanging. You're suspended in air. And oh my gosh, I found the sign. I knew it. I knew it wasn't. Uh, too far. Anyway, it's kind of hard to explain the, uh, golly, the um, hallucinations almost I was having. I was so tired. And you do not want to be distracted <laughs> with hallucinations when you're riding these twisty ass roads around here. And that's exactly what was going on. I was like, man, this is so dangerous. I mean, these are dangerous roads anyway. This is a tricky, not really smooth road. It looks smooth, but it's it's a little bouncy. And I was so tired. And every turn seemed like a, oh my gosh, there's a creek here. Oh my gosh, I could have coffee this morning. <laughs> okay, so this is the sign that I saw last night. And to see this in the middle of the night, I, I really didn't get it when I saw it. I saw the top sign first, camp and designated sites only. And immediately I thought, so there's sites up here. <laughs> and then as I'm passing the sign, I saw the bottom one and it said all campsites and I said, Oh, wait a minute. There's campsites? <laughs> so, uh, that was the, uh, I'm, it's, what is that? 100, 100 yards away from here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the name of the game this weekend is Dispersed roadside camping um, in fact uh, when I get internet again I'm going to search the Nantahala for dispersed camping just to see where it's at um, I know that they're not going to have any <laughs> dispersed roadside creekside camping um, because they don't want anybody, even hikers, camping within, I don't know, 200 yards of a creek. But I want to camp right on the creek because, uh, 
not not just I want to catch some fish. Um, I also want to cook and um, you know wash my uh, filthy uh, utensils and pots and cook and clean um, and and all that. Um, so that's what I'm going to be looking for. Finding is another thing. I know where one specific spot is, my golden place from the 90s. I came up here in the 90s uh, in a truck with a canoe <laughs> and went paddling down the Nantahala River, in fact, and um, camped on a creek up above the Nantahala, up above these gnarly switchbacks that went all the way up a mountain. And uh, I camped on the creek in my truck with a canoe on the rack on top and I caught some trout in this creek and I cooked them and ate them and I want to recreate that if I can. I'm not super hopeful of catching fish but I want to recreate that moment and uh, on, on a motorcycle and that's kind of really what this trip is about is uh, um, Motorcycle adventure, moto camping, and riding these unbelievably beautiful roads they have. I think I'm even going to enjoy this bumpy thing going out of here because it it's a pretty cool road. It's very tight and twisty. Um, you know, it, it runs along the ridges on this mountain, so it's just like every other road in the area. It's just fantastic. There's almost no traffic, I think. Since I got here last night at 10 o'clock, there's been two cars. And that was shortly after I got here. But anyway, um, I'm taking a look at the map now to uh, see if I can figure out uh, my next destination. But I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, up on uh, 129, the Dragon, right there at the border of North Carolina, Tennessee. I think I'm going to take the Dragon at least one trip in. Get some breakfast, take the dragon in, take it back out and see what happens at that point. So of course it took me just a, a handful of minutes to break down um, my hammock and tarp and took me probably much longer to load everything onto the bike than it did to break everything down. That's why I love hammock camping. Um, and I don't have to get up and down off the ground. <laughs> the older I get, the, the less I am interested in um, getting down on the ground and getting up off the ground in the morning, it just kind of sucks. So after I got the bike loaded up, my first stop was Deals Gap. The uh, resort has a um, breakfast cafe, uh, and I needed some coffee, and I didn't really feel like boiling my own that early. I think I got there just uh, just before seven o'clock, and this is what the parking lot looks like uh, before seven, <laughs> and it starts heating up pretty quickly. Um, and I made a video about the dragon and deals gap and i'll put a link up here in the corner if you want to watch that so i was pretty excited about making a couple of passes across the dragon before the parades got there and all the people contaminated the perfect pristine roads that i was riding but i escaped shortly after my two passes went down 28 highway 28 in search of creeks and camping and perfect roads to ride and here i am turning off of 129 onto the hellbender and this is a very underrated road and i'll make a video about uh the hellbender if you guys are interested um but it's uh it's almost as dangerous as the dragon but underestimated and underrated because it's a much faster road with fewer turns and they're less tight so people take this road for granted and they still get killed on it but it's another fantastic beautiful road that follows the lakes and rivers so i spent the morning um, traveling down some fantastic roads and searching for my elusive campsite from the 90s and i found lots of creeks to fish on but not 
uh, any to camp on, and this was one really good example. I found a fisherman out uh, fly fishing off of a busy road, but apparently my uh, my golden camp spot from the 90s was closed. Both ends of the forest road were closed, so I couldn't even get close to it without hiking in, leaving my bike. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to fulfill my big fantasy of fishing in that perfect camp spot. Um, but I did accomplish the major mission that day, which was to ride the spectacular roads around the National Forest, these beautiful mountains, um, all the rivers and, and lakes. Uh, it was just an incredible day of riding. And um, I finished it off by riding back up and almost in the same area that I'd camped the night before. And uh, I'd camped um, just outside Topoco, um, just below the Dragon uh, last year. And I knew some there were some campsites up here. And I just went up there to find what I could find and I figured I could get the street bike in fairly easily because I'd been here before last year. Camp two, we are here. Camp two is uh, plan B or C. <laughs> it's actually, uh, I thought there was a bigger um, shelter up here. I'm not really concerned about the shelter. I just wanted a place to hang my hammock and park my bike. And there's not a lot of those around here. And the one that I thought was up here is probably, I took the wrong road, but I, it's so tricky getting up here on my street bike <laughs> that I just decided to make the best of the situation which is kind of what I do a lot and uh, so here I am I didn't uh, uh, the, the camp that I wanted to the, the dream that I had was the camp that I had in the 90s where I caught trout on the side of a creek above I don't know, several hundred feet above the Nantahala River on the side of, I think, Waia Mountain. Anyway, they had my special road, my switchback road, locked off at both ends. And I tried my best to get up there, but I couldn't get up there. So, uh, well, I guess I could have hiked, but I had to lift my bike a mile or two away from the camp. So anyway, camp two. Disappointing, but it's still pretty cool. I like it up here. I uh, had a shower already, shower, bath. I feel a lot better. A couple of days on the road will uh, make you feel like crap, though. Anyway, I'm at Camp 2. I've got a steak. That is uh, my consolation prize. Since it uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to catch any fish by my camp and catch my fish and eat my fish by my camp that was the dream the dream appears to be dead now um, so my consolation prize is the leftover beers I had from last night steak and I got some snacks and so I'm just gonna roll up in here and chill for now and we'll see what happens later I don't think much else will happen this is a um, this is a shelter for hikers. I believe this is gonna be, this may not be the Appalachian Trail, but it's not far away. So maybe it's a spur off the Appalachian Trail. I don't know. I don't know from trails, but like I said, I'm just gonna sit here and chill because it's nice and cool up here. I'm showered, I'm tired as hell. I've been riding since Calais. Shortly after six this morning. So this is my little camp grill that I just bought a few days ago. And I originally saw this camp grill. I can't remember, it seemed like it was probably on YouTube. And um, I believe it was all stainless steel. This, uh, this particular grill 
it was a whole lot cheaper, but I'm guessing maybe because it was made, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the large rods are made of aluminum. The, uh, the cross members are stainless steel, but um, I, I read some reviews where these parts, which are aluminum, got too close to the fire and they melted. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Aluminum. Um, so anyway, I'm going to try it out because I always wanted one of these. I just didn't want to spend seventy, eighty, hundred dollars on it. And I saw this on Amazon for twenty dollars. I think it's nineteen, whatever. Um, so with that, I'm going to put this thing together and see see how this thing works. I really like the design. I think I would prefer to have stainless, all stainless, rather than something that has the, the ability to melt. But I think as long as you're careful, so in other words, have uh, have your fire pretty much burnt down, you know, where the flames aren't lapping up, you've just got hot coals. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's how you're supposed to cook anyway. At least uh, that's how I've always cooked with charcoal, is you let the flames die down. <laughs> Unlike my boy Friday's the bomb, uh, who likes to cook his steaks over <laughs> huge lapping uh, <laughs> um, flames, I'm I'm gonna let my coals die down a little bit. But they're dying down now. I'm gonna throw some some more wood on there, mix everything up, get the fire going again, and then I'll throw my steak on. <laughs> Well, first time on the grill, how bad could it be? I mean, the, the grill appears to, and this steak is <laughs> very heavy. Kind of excited. I'm not real hungry, but kind of excited. I wonder where this knife has been. used to worry a lot about that. Yeah. This looks like sushi. Looks a lot like <laughs> tuna, seared tuna. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty good. Cheers. So, I would say mildly disappointing. I did not achieve my goal of fishing, camping, uh, just moto camping, which is good. I mean, I, yeah, it's kind of hard to beat riding around up here and camping. But the one way I thought I could beat it was fishing, pulling a fish out of a creek or a river next to my camp and firing up the grill and drinking a beer while I eat said fish or fishes. Didn't accomplish that, but uh, still great weekend so far. Very small. Um, this, uh, I think they call it a camp pack grill, pack, pack camp grill. Anyway. Um, I'll put the link down below if you want to try yours out. 
But I would say from reading everybody else's uh, adventures, don't put it in a uh, flaming boiling fire. Um, you know, get you some hot coals <laughs> like I tried to do. Um, it cooks the steak just fine. So, um, anyway, I'm pleased with my purchase. All right, so what I've got, what I'm using to navigate is a combination of Google Maps, which is what I'm looking at right now, Backcountry Navigator Pro, and Google Maps. And Google Maps is really helpful with streets and such, but it also gives you some insight as to trails, like I'm looking at Indian Grave Branch right now on the National Park map. And I can zoom out really easily and see where the pavement is. And, you know, I can also see that I'm pretty close to Tennessee right here. The key to Google Maps, though, when you're out in the woods, is you have to, you must always um, download an offline map. So that's relatively easy to do. Um, and what I usually do is take a big hunk of what I want to do and say, uh, select an area, click this button here, uh, offline maps, and then you select an area for download. Play around with it, you'll, you'll understand it. You could do this on your phone, you could do this on the tablet, but it's very helpful for the big picture. Um, but if you're out in the woods, you're not going to be able to, well, I don't know. I, I've got Sprint. I don't have very good signal out in the middle of nowhere. Um, as long as I'm near an interstate, I'm, I'm golden. But um, when I get into the minutia and the detail that I need, um, I go back to my backcountry navigator. And this has got all, almost all the trail maps. Um, as you can see here, here's a trail map. Um, and this is Forest Road right here that you can see and it goes down into detail and you can uh, elevation you get all kinds of information and of course you can zoom out and see a lot of the detail that you can see on Google Maps just not as clear because you it, this is a topo map and the great thing about Backcountry Navigator is that you can change the map um, that you want to use and I'm not going to be able to do it out here because um, I don't have internet, but the beautiful thing is you can get a, um, you can download the same way you do on Google Maps, you can download um, different maps. In other words, if you want a satellite image, if you want, they've got dozens of different maps and uh, it's a relatively expensive, pro uh, relatively cheap program, um, inexpensive is what I was trying to say. Uh, I think it's like 12, 15 bucks, but it's just loaded with information um, but same thing I would download all your maps that you need before you go um, but it makes things easier to navigate and you can say hey I want to go over here how do I get there and just trace your trace your tracks back now I'm gonna enjoy my coffee I'm drinking my coffee I, Lady, I got buddies who died face down in the muck so that you and I can enjoy this family restaurant right, I'm out of here Hey, dudes, don't go away, man. Come on, this affects all of us, man. Our basic freedom. I'm staying. I'm finishing my coffee. Um, I may be... Uh, I may be rolling back onto, um... The Chirahala, which this is where I'm at on the map. Uh, the Dragon, which I rode yesterday, is up here. It's 129. Anyway, um, doubt I would be going back there since yesterday was so damn crowded. Um, yeah, no, I had my I had my two passes across the Dragon. Relatively few people I had to pass. Uh, that's that's all I typically do is have have one pass and then go actually ride some quiet, <laughs> quiet, uh, beautiful roads without all the people and all the ridiculously loud bikes. 
but I'm thinking right now what I want to do is go back down here to Robbinsville and get on <clears throat> the Chirahala Skyway, which is it's a good 30 minute ride across the Skyway if you're going at a pretty good clip. And that'll take me back into Teleco Plains. And then maybe we'll do run up the river here, which is always a lot of fun. They got some really nice twisty roads. They got some really nice dual sport roads, but that machine is not a dual sport. So that won't be happening today.